In this tutorial, I'm going to look at dissolving and making solutions, and then look at cosmetics and how and why they're tested. But first, some definitions you need to know. What do each of these terms mean? Well, solute is a solid which will dissolve. A solvent is a liquid in which a solute dissolves. A solution is made when a solute dissolves in a solvent. So a solution is a solute dissolved in a solvent. Soluble means that something it will dissolve. And insoluble describes something that will not dissolve. The GCSE syllabus takes that description of a solution one stage further and says it's actually a mixture of a solute and a solvent that does not separate out. We're also going to look at the fact that esters can be used as solvents and how Esters, for example, can be used to dissolve nail varnish colours, whereas water will not dissolve nail varnish. Nail varnish is a solution. It's a solid lacquer which is dissolved in a solvent, which isn't water. That solvent is usually an ester. And for that reason, when the nail varnish has dried and the solvent has evaporated, that solid lacquer will not dissolve in water. It will, however, dissolve in a nail varnish remover liquid, which contains a solvent that it does dissolve in. So why does nail varnish not dissolve in water? Well, there are very strong attractions between each of the particles in nail varnish. These are quite difficult to break. There are also strong attractions between the water molecules in the solvent water. However, water can only make weak attractions between itself and the nail varnish. And these aren't strong enough to overcome the attractions between the varnish molecules or to overcome the attractions between the water molecules. So water will not dissolve nail varnish colours because the attraction between one water molecule and its neighbours is stronger than the attraction that water molecules can make with particles of nail varnish and also the attraction that already exists between particles of nail varnish is stronger than the attraction that water can make with those particles of nail varnish. So the nail varnish stays with the nail varnish and the water stays with the water. The second part of this tutorial looks at cosmetic testing and particularly on animals. Many people have got different opinions about whether testing of cosmetics on animals was ever justified but the law has changed relatively recently and that testing has been banned in the EU. If you go onto this website and the address is here you will find this as a home page. This website says that you should be boycotting L'Oreal cosmetic products. And it says that you should be doing this because they are testing them on animals. Now, this just goes to prove that you shouldn't believe everything that you read on the internet. At the time this web page was written, 2002, it was the case that L'Oreal were testing on animals. However, this website hasn't been changed for 10 years and now is telling us something which is very wrong. In fact, L'Oreal, like all cosmetics companies in the European Union, is no longer allowed to test their products on animals. The situation is that cosmetic testing has been banned on animals in the European Union since 2009. That doesn't mean to say that it's banned all over the world. 
testing on animals is still allowed in the US for cosmetics. And that might include, for example, testing cosmetics in the eyes or on the skin of rabbits and seeing whether there are effects caused or triggered by ultraviolet light and whether it causes any mutations. This doesn't mean that all testing of any product is banned in the EU. For example, all medicines should be tested on animals before they undergo human trials. Testing cosmetics on animals is no longer required. Science has advanced so far that, for example, scientists can now make artificial skin. This sample of EpiSkin has been produced by a cosmetics company. Yes, L'Oreal. So despite that website saying that L'Oreal are the bad guys, in fact they're the good guys because they are one of the foremost leaders of this kind of technology. So why is cosmetics testing on animals banned in the EU? Well, the main reason is it's considered cruel to test cosmetics on animals and indeed unnecessary. There are plenty of cosmetics ingredients that have already been tested on animals in the past and which can be used quite safely in new cosmetic products. Also, technology has moved on so far that there are many alternatives to testing on animals, for example, using that artificial skin or by using computer modelling or indeed testing on humans straight away. The fact that cosmetics are no longer tested on animals in the EU does not mean that cosmetics no longer need to be tested. New products have to be tested thoroughly to make sure that they're safe and they're not going to cause any skin rashes or allergic reactions or indeed any permanent damage to the skin. There were, of course, advantages to testing cosmetics on animals. For example, it's important to test that cosmetic is safe before it's tested on humans so that humans don't get harmed and animals were used because their skin was a close approximation to human skin. However, there were already disadvantages to testing on animals. First of all, people believe that animals have got some form of moral rights and therefore it's cruel to test on an animal that hasn't given its permission. Also, that the animals might suffer or that the animal skin may not actually be a perfect match for human skin, such that the cosmetic causes no problem for the animal but may cause a problem on human skin. Obviously, the people in different countries have different opinions on whether we should be testing cosmetics on animals, but there are people even within the same country who have differing opinions. Some people think that the alternative methods will never be as good as animal testing, and some people think that human life is far more valuable than animal life, so it's fine to use animals, but others believe that animals should have similar rights to humans and not have to suffer cosmetic testing. You may, in an exam question, have to justify why there is this difference in opinion. Here's a past exam question. Esters can be made by reacting two types of chemical together. Complete this word equation about making esters. Alcohol plus organic acid gives ester plus water. Cosmetics are tested before they're used on humans in some countries. Cosmetics are still tested on animals before they're used on humans. Write about the testing of cosmetics. Right, your answer should include why cosmetics need to be tested. So we'll write, they are tested to make sure they are safe to use on humans. An advantage of testing on animals might be that animals have similar skin to humans. But a disadvantage of testing on animals is that testing on animals can be considered cruel. On the mark scheme, I wrote 
organic acid, that's pretty much the same as carboxylic acid, and also water. The reason for testing, I wrote to check that it's safe to use, or to make sure it's safe, or that it doesn't harm humans, that was absolutely fine. Um, for an advantage, although the advantage I gave isn't there, it is further down here. Allow animals will react similarly to humans or animals have the same systems as humans. Uh, as a disadvantage, animal suffering or animal rights or not having the same effect on them, but there are other possibilities given in the mark scheme. This second similar question says that perfumes must be tested before they can be used on humans. Years ago, perfumes were tested on animals. Write down one disadvantage of testing perfumes on animals. Uh, I think we'll write it could be considered to be cruel. And although that's one of the possible answers, there are, as you can see here, other possible answers as well. Finally, this question, she wants to remove the nail varnish. She uses nail varnish remover. Water will not dissolve the nail varnish. Explain why. Use ideas about forces between molecules of nail varnish and molecules of water. A label diagram may help. So we might say the forces between molecules of nail varnish and also between molecules of water are both strong Those between varnish and water are weak. On the mark scheme, it says that there are strong intermolecular forces in water, or strong intermolecular forces in nail varnish for one mark, and that there are weak intermolecular forces between water and the nail varnish for the second mark, uh, although there, as you can see, are alternative answers to the question or alternative wording, or it could be shown by a decent diagram that's annotated.